when Yoko Ono pissed off Chuck Berry. In 1972, Yoko and John Lennon took over the Mike Douglas show for a week. This was no ordinary show. Fans and viewers were thrilled to learn that John would be joined on stage by the famed known as the father of rock and roll. Chuck Berry's legendary influence laid the groundwork for the unique blend of pop and rock that the Beatles perfected. While it sounded like a performance for the century, when Yoko Ono took to the microphone, things got awkward fast. What could have possibly derailed the musical mashup between two of rock's biggest stars? Well, there was a third musician on stage, John's wife, Yoko Ono. So, who was she, and why did she piss off Chuck Berry live on air? Yoko Ono has been one of the most enigmatic and misunderstood artists of the last century, so a clash between her and Berry was imminent. Yoko Ono was a strange figure back then, but it wasn't just her own personality that people found strange. Her early musical and visual artworks were head-scratching and boundary-pushing. So, how did a relatively unknown avant-garde performance artist end up on stage with Chuck Berry and married to the frontman of the Beatles? Before Lennon met Ono, the Beatles star was married to Cynthia Powell. The two met at the Liverpool College of Art. She was engaged when Lennon asked her out, but eventually, the two developed a relationship. Things were rocky back then, and the singer known for his songs about peace was embroiled in domestic abuse issues. Cynthia eventually broke the news that she was pregnant, and they decided to get married on August 23, 1962. John's first son Julian was born while he was on tour, and over time, their marriage began to degrade as John became more and more entranced by the hippie culture and began to use LSD habitually. During these strange times for John's personal life, the Beatles were reaching peak popularity, years known as Beatlemania. The UK exploded with fandom for the Beatles thanks to singles like Please Please Me, From Me to You, and She Loves You. In February of 1964, the Beatles hopped across the pond and performed in the US on shows like The Ed Sullivan Show where a staggering 73 million viewers tuned in to watch the band live. While a number of songs have reached billions of views on YouTube, those numbers were simply unreal back in an era that predated the internet. The success of the Beatles and their rapid fan base essentially laid the groundwork for boy and girl bands like One Direction and Black Slash Pink that have made huge waves over the last few years. At the peak of Beatlemania on November 9, 1966, Lennon met Yoko Ono at a countercultural art gallery named the Indica Gallery in the basement of the Indica Bookshop in London. Yoko Ono was born February 18, 1933 in Japan. She had a rough life growing up during the Tokyo bombings and the rest of World War II. Starvation ran rampant and she had to beg for food to survive. After the war, she enrolled in college and ended up being classmates with Prince Akihito, who would later become the Emperor of Japan. In grad school, she became the first woman to enter the philosophy program at Gakushin University, but she ended up leaving after two semesters. She traveled back and forth between New York and Japan over the next few years, where she met artists, musicians, promoters, and filmmakers. She began to work on her own artist career and connected with the international, interdisciplinary community of composers, poets, artists, and designers known as Fluxus. When John walked into the Fluxus exhibit at the Indica Gallery, Yoko Ono was there preparing her exhibit. He struck up a conversation with her over a piece titled Hammer and Nail, where patrons would participate by hammering nails into a wooden board to create the piece. The pair immediately hit it off, and Yoko began calling and visiting John at his home while his wife was around. Cynthia Lennon was already a bit leery of John because of his drug use, so she obviously had questions for him. John gave a pretty flimsy response, telling his wife that Yoko was trying to fund her art. Two years later, while Cynthia was visiting Greece on holiday, John invited Yoko over. Together, the pair spent a night working on what would become unfinished music number one, Two Virgins. Afterward, the two began their affair, and when Cynthia returned home, she found Yoko in a bathrobe drinking tea with John, who simply blurted out, oh, hi. That same year, Yoko got pregnant and later miscarried. Afterwards, John and Cynthia got divorced. John and Yoko got married the following year, and they began protesting against the Vietnam War with their performance art. Their escapades were encapsulated in the Beatles song, The Ballad of John and Yoko. And John didn't just pay tribute to her in his main band, he even legally added Ono to his middle name. During his honeymoon phase with Yoko, the Beatles began the laborious task of finishing up their final two albums while John's relationship with the rest of the Beatles began to deteriorate. Two years prior to the infamous show where Yoko pissed off Barry, in 1970, Paul McCartney filed suit for the dissolution of the Beatles' contractual partnership. After two more years of turmoil, Lennon signed the agreement to terminate the partnership 
while he was on vacation with his family at Walt Disney Resort in Florida. During these last few years, John was moving away from his work with the Beatles and taking on side projects and solo roles, including the infamous Mike Douglas Show gig. When you Chuck gives the camera a shocked look before recovering and showing off his famous duck walk. From Yoko's artistic background, it's doubtful her scream was a cry for attention, as comedian Bill Burr put it, but rather a calculated performance to subvert audience expectations and remind us that we don't always get what we want, even if it's something simple like an uninterrupted duet. Despite the friction at the show, it was still a great moment for John. Twelve years later, John's son Julian reached out to Chuck and the pair got together to recreate the performance in honor of John after his life was tragically cut short. Although Yoko Ono's wailing vocals on The Mike Douglas Show will forever live on as that one time Yoko Ono pissed off Chuck Berry, her work with John has withstood the test of time, urging us to look deeper than the surface and appreciate music in its entirety. What did you think of this memorable moment of music history? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this one, click that like button and subscribe for more music entertainment videos.